Welcome to Bearham Engines, guys. This is what we've got going on today. So we try and rescue this very valuable Cosworth cylinder head. And have you ever wondered how you balance comrods properly? Well, today we show you. Well, here we are, guys, on this fine Monday morning. And what better to be doing than balancing a set of comrods, eh? We have the comrods here out of the MGTD. Now, this is the block that we had on the boring bar last week, I think, for a sort of a long period of time, putting the liners in. It might have been the week before, actually. I've done quite a lot of liners since Christmas. Put a nice new set of liners in there, which has enabled us to bore it back to standard. So I'll show you the block in a moment. Don't know whether you're liking the new format of video, guys, but the last couple of videos, we've shown two or three sort of subjects within the video. Bit of an introduction to show you what's going to be in the video. I know a lot of you have put in the comments, you find the, the intro a little bit creepy, maybe. A little bit cheesy, I don't know, but at least it gives you an idea of what's going to be in the video, rather than just rambling on about generally what's in the workshop and what's going on, rather than showing you actually maybe some interesting technical stuff, something like that. So yeah, in this new sort of format of video, guys, definitely in the new series of videos, we're gonna be doing a little bit of an introduction um, and we're gonna be doing two or three subjects per, per video, just on some technical stuff, really. Maybe have a little bit of a ramble, but um, we're not gonna make too much of a habit of that because a lot of you find the technical stuff and the machining stuff fairly interesting. So we're gonna be maybe sticking to that for a bit. I think the idea really, we've had a little bit of help with the management side of the channel and the idea of an introduction. I know at the moment there's maybe a little bit of work needed to be done on it. It's a little bit like the old style Top Gear, isn't it? a little bit cheesy, a bit creepy, but um, it just, the idea is to give the viewer a bit of a view into what's coming rather than just rambling and turning the thing off it's it's to sort of hold the retention within the video so people just watch more of it throws you more into the algorithm i think that's how it works but um that's the idea and obviously to be honest the last couple of videos i found it sort of makes it a little bit easier to make them because you can do sort of four or five minutes on a subject just stick to one particular thing keep it nice and simple as well because obviously there's a lot of viewers out there which are very interested in what we do, but maybe not so knowledgeable. So um, we can just cut to the basics and um, every video just go on to something else. And hopefully over time, you learn quite a lot from it and find it interesting. So that's the plan. Let me know what you think about that. But anyway, guys, balancing these rods. So I thought it'd be a perfect opportunity today to show you how to balance these end for end and what the process is in balancing rods and pistons. So first of all, with the pistons, not all pistons, believe it or not, even if they're in a set and they're brand new from the same manufacturer, um, they don't always weigh the same. In fact, a lot of these old ones, we've got up to about 12, 15 grams different from one to another. So it's surprising really, because you look at them, same with the rods, you look at them and you think, well, they look identical to the, to the one looks identical to the other, but they're about 12 grams different. So what we tend to do is if we need to remove material, um, we can take it out of the inside here. So what I tend to do is you can turn a bit out the outside in the inside um, all the way down to where the pin housing is here. Um, and that seems to really, that's usually all you need to do. And that's, you can remove quite a lot of material out of there, believe it or not. Um, we obviously don't want to start tampering with the crown unless you're doing all of them so that's really not going to help and you can't remove anything off the external so internally whether it be with a little die grinder or stick it in the lathe and turn it out that's generally enough to get the pistons right so the process of these it's the same as the rods really what we do is we weigh them all as a complete unit so that's pin rings um, gudgeon uh, gudgeon pin and circlips if there is circlips this is a pinch bolt type so there's no circlips um, so everything you need in the piston assembly and we weigh that as a whole um, do each one we find the lightest one first you put that to one side and record the the weight of that lot and then you go you, you go them out all the way up to the heaviest and we start with the heaviest and take the heaviest down to the lightest make sure that we can remove um, 
the material because sometimes we have a set of old rings which probably two three grams different to the next set so we can usually jiggery around to get the weights as close as possible before we start chomping out material out of the piston so we do that guys and once that is done we put these as a unit to one side and we know all the pistons don't matter what rod you put them on they all weigh the same then the com rods what we do we obviously make sure that it's got all the components so we want the the rod bolts and nuts um, we want in this case it's a pinch bolt so we've got the bolt and washers very important to make sure you've got the washers and that there as well um, because they can weigh a couple of grams and next thing we do is blast them so we blast the rod make sure all the corrosion and everything's off because it's surprising if there's any rust or anything on there but one it doesn't look nice and two there can be a little bit of weight in that crusty corrosion next thing is we torque up the big ends and make sure that um, the housings measure absolutely fine if not we size those um, and we do that on all the rods small end if it's just a, if it's a small end bush we make sure that that bush is perfect if not we renew it and make sure that the new pins fit in nicely this is obviously a pinch bolt so we just have to make sure that, that housing in there is good and not scored up and horrible um, because obviously when you do that bolt up it pinches on the pin on this one so that's it we get all those rods like that and we lay them out then what we do is we always number them so this one's number one and we number them one to four and then what we do is we start weighing them end for end so first of all we weigh always i always weigh the the big end because that's the heaviest end and we've got the scales here where you can see these um, we've got this end here which is on a post we've got the scales down here which is separate and we've got these here, which are an aluminium block. And that hole there is 16 mil bang on. And that slides over nicely onto either this end, which has got these little roller bearings or this little jig here. So that will slide over nicely onto there. Um, and we put that onto there for weighing the big ends. So then what we do is we put this on the scales and we zero it so that Basically, it's not accounting for that weight, so we just zero the scale, so now that is zero grams. Then what we want to do, so obviously that is a lovely fit inside that housing. So what we want to do is we want to set up the rod, first of all, on these scales here. So it's not like that, it's almost as perfectly horizontal as you can. And what we want is this swinging bearing holder here which holds the small end in this case, we want that as vertical as possible when it's set up. So we slide the rod onto here, just having it free. And then we move that over so that is as vertical as it would hang itself. And then we record the weight. So on here, 464, 464 grams, and we take a note of that. Then what we do is we weigh the next one, the next one, and then the next one. We find out which one's lightest, which one's heaviest. And the same as with the pistons, we put them in order from lightest to the left, going over to the heaviest. Then I remove the material off the heaviest first. And first of all, what you've got to do is look at where you can remove material. So on this, you've got these little lugs here. You've obviously got this little bit of bracing at the top there. You can remove some material off there. You don't want to be removing anything really off this face or obviously internal, anywhere there, the nuts or anything that's going to affect the strength of the comrade. You don't want to be removing material. You can take some off around this area here. There's usually quite a lot of flashing up here on the casting. We can remove all that. Um, and then what we do guys is just remove the weight on all of them if they're quite a long way out like these were these were about eight grams different from what from the heaviest to the lightest what we do is we do the, the big ends then we go on to the small ends so we then turn it all around we take this this off that little jig and put it on the the swinger over here and that enables us to turn the rods around and weigh that small end so that that hangs off there and that end there is the same on every one. That is just taking that weight there on average onto the scales. Then again, we put the lightest to the left, heaviest up there and we remove material where we can. So you've got to be very careful where you take material. You don't want to be removing too much off this area and making it thin um, and just losing some strength. So basically guys, I have done all these. Once you've done them all, then what I do is check them on an overall weight and make sure 
that they are all weigh the same because in theory once you've done one end and the other and got them all the same they should weigh all they should sort of weigh all the same if not it's usually because you've had to remove quite a lot of material off the big end first and then when you do the small end you have to sort of go back to the big end and then do them again so it's a fairly lengthy process but what i do so that there 630 grams 630 6.30, near enough 6.30. So I try and get them all within about 0 0.1. Um, 0 0.1 is next to nothing. So it's very difficult to get them absolutely bang on, but 0.1 is next to nothing. If they all weigh the same, jobs are good and it's all done. Um, then what we've got to do is make sure we've got new bearings here. So you've got the big end bear shells there. I do make sure that I weigh these in pairs and make sure they all weigh the same, but usually they do. Um, and that is it, guys. That is how we weigh rods from end to end. Next thing I've got to do, here's the block down here, look. So we've got to take these bearings out there, the old ones. John has ground the mains to 10 thou under. So we are going to be removing those bearings and putting the new ones in. I'm going to be dummying up this crank that he's ground putting it in there and just literally nipping it up. You don't need to torque it because the customer's got to remove everything anyway and clean the block thoroughly, although we have cleaned it. Um, I'm going to be, first of all, you can see where I put the liners in and I've put a nice big taper at the back of the liners. And the reason for that is because the pistons go in from the back on this engine because the big end um, on the rod is actually a bigger diameter than the piston. So the rod won't actually go through. So we put the pistons in from the back before we put the crank in. Um, and I'm just going to be nipping it all up loosely, turning the block over, and if the piston juts out, we want to have them all level with the block. So however much it juts out at the back or the front, we just remove that mount off on the lathe on all of them, check the weight again. That's as simple as that. Sounds simple, but it's actually not. It takes quite a lot of time. And as I say, once we've done that, the customer is going to arrive tomorrow to pick it all up. So another job done well. All right, mate? Yeah, I'm all right. How's the Subaru? Well, uh, just about managed to limp it in this morning. Oh, really? Yeah. Eight set of exhaust gaskets, you think? I think it's a tent. Well, <laughs> it's, um, I think it's because I used multi-layer steel on one of the more dodgy flanges. Ah. And it's, it's sealed for a bit, it's and now it isn't. Dodgy so flange. Messing up the fuel trims and not running right. Bloody nightmare, mate. Had to unplug the front lander this morning. To, oh. uh, got in all right? Just about. Never mind, mate. Get a new set on, 11th time lucky. Exactly, yeah. Really? Anyway, I'm just boring one of the Figaro's. Got a couple of blocks to do on the Figaro's and then I can get the four, four of the engines done yep. on a pallet and sent off and then we can crack on with the other three in between jobs. Nice. Um, over on the milling machine, mate, which is... Uh, what we wanted to talk about today. We've got a Cosworth cylinder head. So this head was not in the best of states. No. No. Um, we've got a, quite a lot of corrosion on the face, which we've welded, dug out and welded up. Um, and had to sort of grind back. But we do see a lot of these cosies that are corroded, don't we, quite badly. Yeah. Um, the trouble is now, they're getting quite expensive. So it's mm. not like a modern head where you can go and buy a new head for three or 400 quid. No. You're looking probably a couple of thousand quid for a about, decent. About two grand in it, really. Yeah, that's what I mean. And then it's gonna need work. So it's well worth rescuing. So we've basically welded up the face, um, or Tom has, our yeah. Tom, trusty welder. Ground it all back, reface the head. And what I'm doing here, you can see we've had some welding underneath these manifold um, clamps really so where you where you bolt through the inlet manifold uh, what happens is you get a, sort of goes thin through there it's quite it, it's a bit of a casting fault to be honest yeah. it's a bit thin there and then over time because the inlet manifold is moving about it can just fracture it and split it across here so one of them was split and uh, Tom's welded it all the way across but he's just put bracing on the other the three there well, and it gets worse with, when they've been ported as well, isn't it? It does, it's yeah. Thinner, then. It's not overly pretty, but it doesn't matter. You won't see that no, it's underneath, underneath the manifold. 
And now what I'm doing is just facing all the faces because um, obviously we've had some heat go through there with the welding, so it's a bit buckled. Yeah. So basically, mate, it's not the easiest thing to set up. You would think it was, or initially when we first did the the first one of these, we thought, oh, ideal. It's going to be fairly easy to set up because because that face is parallel to the exhaust face. But it's actually looks like it. Looks it? Like it. Yeah, it's but it's actually not, is it? A couple it? of degrees out, isn't it? Really? It's a couple of degrees out. Don't know why they did that. No. Really irritating, mate. If it was parallel, you'd just be able to lie that flat on there. This would be parallel, and away we go. But you can see we've had to. Shim it, out Shim it up slightly, and it is literally a degree or two, isn't it? Yeah. So it's not so bad on this side because you can sit that that face flat on there, but this side you've got to sit on parallels. Right. So um, I've done that already. This face is done. So I'm just doing this one, mate. Nice. And then that is about about it with this head. We can get that in the post and sent back to the customer. Well, everyone, that is it for another video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, guys. Hit that like button, and we'll see you in the next episode. Take it easy, guys.